It's been two years since you revealed that you had breast cancer. Yeah. Is it something you think about a lot? I used to think about it a lot more, that's for sure, especially in the beginning. And I remember thinking I would never live in a world where I wouldn't think about it a hundred times a day. And, and that was daunting to me, the fact that, oh my God, this is now something that I have to live with all the time. It's my new reality. And uh, But, you know, I've really come to a point now, It's it's been, yeah, exactly two years since I was diagnosed. And I think I have come to a really good place where it doesn't take over my life every day. You know, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's a little different. It's something that comes up a lot more, but I'm not as sad and kind of rattled by it like I used to be. Now it's more about just empowering other women and talking about it in a more positive way, about really getting out there and educating women on how to um, you know, be on top of their own health. You know, for folks who don't know, can you tell us your story? You mm -hmm. found out via a mammogram. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I found out I had breast cancer, I was 36 years old, I had no family history, and I was actually going um, to a new doctor to do a third round of IVF to have a baby, in vitro fertilization, to try to have a baby. Bill and I, my husband, we had struggled with trying to have a baby for several years, and this was a, a good route for us, but we'd never been successful, and we couldn't quite figure out why we couldn't have a baby naturally or through IVF. It wasn't working. So we went to a new doctor, and they did things very differently than other doctors. And one of the things they said to me was, you have to get a mammogram. And I said, I'm 36, I'm healthy, I have no family history, I don't need a mammogram. And they go, no, you have to get one because if we do get you pregnant and you happen to have breast cancer, the pregnancy could fuel the breast cancer, all those hormones for nine months. And thank God I did because it was through that mammogram that I found out I had breast cancer. And part of the process throughout the treatment, you got a double mastectomy. What yeah. went behind that decision? In the end, it was just a, a personal decision to not have to look over my shoulder for the rest of my life. And I just wanted to move on. And for me, even working in such a superficial industry and talking about fashion and beauty and all these sorts of things, you know, whether it's on e-news or fashion, please, vanity is, is just not something that really exists in my life. I'm actually a very simple person and I didn't care what I would look like. I just wanted to get the cancer out and I wanted to move on with my life. Mm -hmm. And you're getting a word out right now through a special program called Save Lids to Save Lives. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your part in that and what is that? Yeah, you know, General Mills each year for the past 15 years does this incredible program that so many people know about, Save Lids to Save Lives, and it's all about going out and, and, and finding those products that have the lid on them. There's 25 General Mills products right now, from Cheerios to Cinnamon Toast Crunch to Yo Play Yogurt. And it's really about just getting your hands on those packages, cutting the lids out or peeling the lids back, and sending them in. And for every lid you redeem or send in, 10 cents will go towards Susan G. Komen or its affiliates across the country, up to $1.5 million. And I gotta say, it's a pretty incredible program. Over the, the past 15 years, General Mills has donated $50 million to the fight against breast cancer. And that's, not, that's, a, that's a huge amount. And, and so much of that has to do with people being involved and just playing a small part. Here we are, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to women who are concerned about it? It's on top of their minds. Yeah, I think so many women, you know, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they see the pink, they see the ribbons, and that's all great, but they don't quite know how to, what's the takeaway here? What do I need to be doing? The most important thing is just having a conversation with your doctor, getting to the doctor. We all make appointments for our kids and our husband and what time we have to pick up our, you know, the carpool and the kid from soccer practice. But what about your appointment, getting your appointment on there? For instance, my mom called me the other day and I reminded her about her mammogram. So she's going in next Monday. It's really about that. Just making sure you're going in once a year, getting your mammogram if you're um, over 40. Um, but even younger, you know, younger women say to me, well, I'm not supposed to get a mammogram until I'm 40. Should I just not worry about it until then? But you were younger, you know, you were 36. What should I be doing? And my answer to that is just go to your doctor and start the conversation. Say to your doctor, hey, I saw this girl on TV. She had no family history. She was 36. I'm 35. What do I need to be doing? And that might mean just the monthly self-exams. Uh, that might mean finding out your family history with your doctor and saying, hmm, maybe we should test you for the gene. 
just starting the conversation. That is the difference sometimes between saving your life and not saving your life.